you're a boxer, oftentimes you are remembered by your defeats more than your victories. And for George Chevallo, that is certainly the case. His very name immediately brings you to a golden time for heavyweights. And this tough Canadian, he fought them all. Ali, Frazier, Foreman, forever establishing his honor and his character in the ring. In 20 years in the ring, George Chevallo never hit the canvas. But as Chris Conley shows us for Outside the Lines, the punishment Chevallo has absorbed outside the ring is beyond any measure of cruel. In the darkness of his bedroom at night, agonizing memories flood the mind of 70-year-old George Chevallo. So he tries to keep the darkness at bay. It's pretty hard for me to turn all the lights off, pretty hard. Because I turned all the lights off in my life, like turning off life itself in a way. Under the bright lights of fight night in the 60s and 70s, there was never any doubt about the courage of George Shavala. For more than two decades, he reigned as the heavyweight champion of Canada. He notched 64 career knockouts. a smart, strategic fighter with a hard head that even in defeat survived the blows of sluggers like Joe Frazier and George Foreman. Getting hit by George Foreman is kind of like getting hit with a big, uh, the big Cadillac car going at 50 miles an hour. Boom. And getting hit by Joe Frazier is like getting hit with a small car like a Pontiac at 100 miles an hour. There's a different feel to it. Big and tough don't describe him. He was a good fighter. George like I tell you today, if I had George here today, world champion, mortal sins, take care of all the guys. Angelo Dundee should know. He was in Muhammad Ali's corner when the greatest took on Shavalo at Maple Leaf Gardens in 1965. That fight went a grueling 15 rounds. Ali won by unanimous decision. But as always, George Chevallo's toughness won the champ's respect. Who's the best heavyweight you've ever fought? Well, the toughest, and it's the toughest puncher taker, Chevallo. He went to the hospital after every fight with bleeding kidneys, and me, I went dance with my wife. So I always say, loser goes to the hospital. So that way, I think I won the fight, you know? <laughs> In all, he fought more than 90 times. No opponent ever knocked him down. It took the fate of his loved ones to bring George Chevallo to his knees. George and his wife Lynn had five children. The youngest of their four boys was Jesse Chevallo. When Jesse was 19, a motorcycle accident ripped his kneecap off. The ensuing pain was too intense for him to bear. They went to a party one night, and uh, he complained about his leg, and in particular, someone had said uh, he had something for my son's pain. That was my son's introduction to heroin. Nine months of heroin addiction would drive Jesse to the point of no return. On February 18, 1985, his family returned home to find Jesse lifeless in his bedroom, a shotgun at his side. He had shot himself through the mouth. Went to the hospital, I was there with my wife, and the doctor came out, he just, he says, he's gone. Uh, and when you lose a child, it's the worst thing that ever happened. You know, just never forget it. Jesse's suicide sent a shockwave through the Chevallo family. My wife would always say, after the loss of our first son, I won't be able to, if we lose another one, I won't be here. Their daughter, Vanessa, immediately saw the toll it took on her mother. She'd have a few drinks and she'd say, I'm not losing another kid. I can't handle it if I lose another kid. And I know I'm gonna lose another kid. 
for two more Chevalo sons had become heroin addicts, Georgie Lee and Stephen. I believe that, unfortunately, Jesse introduced my other brothers to it. Night after night, George, one of Canada's most famous men, would search for them in the back alleys and abandoned tenements of Toronto, where they'd score and shoot up. My sons would be so excited about the thought of using. They'd be so excited that when the dealer would pull out the, the heroin in his hand, and when they would look at the heroin, within the flash of one second, one single second, both my sons would defecate in their drawers, they'd defecate in their pants. Both were stealing to support their habits and would do time in prison. In 1992, George shot video of Georgie Lee being confronted by Vanessa, desperate to somehow connect to the older brother she loved. Swear, swear on Jesse's life, there's not shooting up in Jackie. She caught you. You caught me shooting up in Jackie. I saw you. I didn't see a needle in your, your, in your, but I assumed there was something tight around your arm, and you were like, oh, Less than two years after this video was shot, Georgie Lee Chevallo died of a heroin overdose on October 31st, 1993. They found Georgie at a hotel with a syringe in his arm. It was very sad. After all, he was my favorite brother. It was a very sad time. Two days after Georgie Lee's funeral, George saw his wife lying on Jesse's bed. I saw her, her hands cradling the cremated remains of our son, Jesse, and a suicide note. What did the note say? It was on a list of groceries. That's the only piece of paper she could find. And it hurts me. It hurts me to say it. So I looked for love, and I couldn't find any. George emerged from his grief by talking to Stephen about someday taking their story and an anti-drug message to Canada's students. But Stephen continued to struggle with his own addiction. On his 35th birthday, Stephen would be in prison for drug-related thefts. Still. In this 1995 interview, he spoke of his determination to conquer his addiction. My father's never given up hope on me. When he says to me, you know, you know, kid, I need you to be well. I need you to be okay, so I'll be okay. And he's saying that with, with conviction, and he's, he's almost in tears when he says things like that. They, they hit home to me now. And I, I think to myself, man, I've got to be better. I've got to be well for him and the rest of my family. On August 5th, 1996, he was released from prison. Twelve days later, Stephen Chevallo was found dead of a heroin overdose, the third Chevallo's son to suffer a drug-related death. The horrible thing is that I couldn't stop it. I couldn't stop their pain. I couldn't stop their addiction. Once you are an addict, you are always an addict. One month after Stephen's death, following through on the plan they'd once made together, George began coming to high school auditoriums like this one across Canada, alone, to talk about drugs and his family. I wish my sons could be here, my sons who aren't here on earth, just for 20 seconds. Collectively, they will tell you that doing drugs is insane. They will tell you that doing drugs is like hating yourself honest to god it's like hating yourself and you don't want to hate yourself you want to love yourselves you want to love yourselves in the 12 years since he began george estimates that he has given this talk and relived the deaths of his wife and sons more than a thousand times and, uh, my son died the same day by the way as river phoenix dying in front of viper's nightclub in, in uh in hollywood 
on a sunny afternoon at my son dying at a grungy hotel.